Hey guys, Scott once again back with you with a new beer dissection video today. Um, what I have here, depending on when you're watching this, um, I had picked up, I'll probably pop over my shoulder, a new compilation um, pack from uh, Brooklyn Brewery this time. Um, those of you not aware of Brooklyn Brewery, obviously it's in Brooklyn, New York. I live in the New York area. Garrett Oliver used to be the master brewer, head brewer, owner. I don't know where he falls in today. He has been an icon in the craft beer industry over the last several decades. Read many of his books, um, food pairings, and things like that. So if you're not familiar out of the New York area, you may not, and you're watching this, you may not be as familiar with it. But they have a big footprint, so I wouldn't be surprised if you're seeing the same... Uh, you know, 12 pack that they have. And there's roughly four beers. Like a lot of these um, Sam Adams, I've done a couple of them on, uh, Southern Tier, similar thing. They had three or four beers in this 12 pack, um, about three or four, I think it was four beers, three of each, a um, couple of IPAs, hazy IPAs, Pilsner, which I've done at, at the filming of this video, I've already done a review on that one. Um, and they've been so far so good um, as I'm reviewing that. So what we're going to be talking about today is the Brooklyn Brewery Pulp Art Hazy IPA. Again, the filming of this video, I did one on an Imperial IPA, which I think is kind of a double IPA, 9%. Um, and if, you want, if you're interested in that, take a look at that one. That one was, uh, that beer was okay. It um, wasn't fantastic, but, you know, average. So this one's also called Pulp Art, but this is the Hazy IPA, not the Imperial IPA, even though the, the uh, can looks very similar to each other. This is registering at about 6.5% alcohol. Um, unlike a lot of my other videos, um, I don't have a lot of the specifics on what hops they're using, but I'm presuming there's going to be, you know, tropical fruit, uh, maybe some citrus and things like that, with, like we see in many of these Hazy IPAs or New England IPAs. Um, so again, Brooklyn Brewery Pulp Art Hazy IPA. I think it was. I think I just said it was at six and a half percent alcohol. Um, and again, um, Brooklyn Lager, uh, the Amber Lager, is like one of their like showcases they've had around for decades. I think around here, um, like I do with most of my IPAs, I recommend something like either like a modified Spiegel Tulip. Um, oversized sniffer glass, something that has a little kind of opening for some surface area of the beer. Again, as I've said in other videos, you know, you want that surface area and then you want it kind of funneling down towards the top so you can really get a whiff of that aroma. You're paying extra for some of these IPAs. Why are you going to, you know, put it in a shaker pint? You really want to encourage that hop aroma and of course flavor, but definitely the aroma when it comes to some of the shaping, shapes of the glass. Okay, so anyway, one more time, Pulp Art Hazy IPA. Let's open this bad boy open here, or get this bad boy open. Okay, so again, I apologize in advance. I usually pour pretty heavy these days. I'm doing everything kind of with my right arm. Um, So when we see the, the head on this, it's always going to be a little bit higher than what I would usually recommend doing at home. You usually want one to two finger breaths, one to two inches. Um, this one I'm going to show you right now. You can see how I pour it, but nice, supportive, white, dense foam. What's okay with this is that, um, you know, it, it, this is going to sustain itself. And if I've got a pretty beer clean glass, you're going to get a lot of lacing here. Some white head foam, tight bubbles. Okay, looking at it, it says it's a hazy IPA. There's definitely some chill haze in there. Remember, they brew some of these with oats and unmalted wheat. I, again, I don't know in this Brooklyn batch what the actual grist is. And again, for those of you who haven't watched those videos, the grist is the, the grain, all the grains they're using, kind of like the recipe. Um, but a lot of these hazies, they'll use oats, unmalted wheat to, to add to the um, haziness to it, as well as all the polyphenols and hot matter because a lot of these will have a, a lot of hop flavor and aroma to it versus say bitterness if it's a, a true hazy. So you'll see hazy, juicy, um, New England IPA, a lot of synonymous, and there is a lot of overlap between American IPA, hazy, juicy IPA. The, 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 the main point though is most of these are gonna be hop, I should say most, they're all should be hop forward beers 
dominating a lot of the malt profile. Okay, so here it is again. Okay, let me take a sniff of this aroma before we lose some of it. Oh yeah, this is very nice. Right now, it already smells better than the Imperial Double IPA. You kind of get like trop pineapple, tropical fruit. I must get like cantaloupe smell aroma to it. But definitely tropical fruit. Um, you know, I'm not real versed on, on passion fruit. I know some people like to drink passion fruit martinis, but um, along those lines, maybe slight citrus, but this is not hitting you. Maybe a little pineapple, but, you know, not much really as far as grapefruit or, or too much citrus I, that I get at least, or I perceive. Okay, maybe slight peach in this uh, mango, that type of more like a, a stone fruit type of aroma. And pretty much like a bread crust type of malt aroma to it, which, you know, you kind of expect that. This is not as pale as many hazy IPAs are. It has a little bit more oomph to the color, a kind of gold, uh, medium gold color. But definitely, you know, not perfectly clear, but a nice color. Okay. Remember, the, the, the West Coast IPAs are the ones that are usually going to be a little more clear, um, more of an amber kind of color, more hot bitterness. Okay. So let's take a cheers to you guys. Yeah. Again, you still kind of get that peach, at least I perceive, a little bit of that peach kind of mango, tropical fruit, slight pineapple. Um, now, I don't really get like any, you know, even on the aroma, I was getting a little citrus. I don't get really any grapefruit orange on this, maybe a subtle orange to it. Um, pretty medium bodied. Not very attenuated. Um, so I'm getting a little, you know, residual sweetness in the beer. Um, which you always have that in beer. This is not champagne, unless you're drinking like Saisons and things like that from the Belgian style. Um, but you know, have a, it's definitely some, there's still some, you know, body to this. Um, some creaminess, uh, no alcoholic warmth that I can pick up. And, but again, at six and a half percent, um, I don't expect to get much of that. I, my, my, my wheelhouse for that alcoholic warmth is around seven and a half, maybe seven and a half to eight percent. Um, Creaminess, the carbonation, like I said, it's kind of medium. But subjectively, it's, it's a very nice beer. I mean, this is better. I en I'm enjoying this one more than the Pulp Art Imperial IPA, which I've reviewed before with this. Um, i just getting a lot more of that, that fruity hop flavor to it and a little bit more aroma. Um, the malt backbone on this again typical bread crust graham cracker light toast type of malt profile on it um the bitterness you know moderate bitterness it's not you know it's not like your west coast ipa so it kind of has the bitterness probably more like a true hazy even though it's a little darker and maybe not as citrusy as some of those other hazies um but if you like a stone fruit, peach, mango, kind of IPA, uh, not astringent at all, which is great. It's very easy drinking. I would recommend this um, more than their double IPA or their imperial IPA, uh, which I kind of think I threw a B, B range. This I would definitely throw like a B plus, you know, A minus uh, 90 range type of beer. Um, I'm definitely going to enjoy this a lot more than the than the other one um, that that I reviewed from them. But again, Brooklyn Brewery, you know, an iconic brewery here in the metro metropolitan area. Um, they usually have solid beers all the time, and it just depends on what your taste profile is on which ones you think kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, pairing again, like IPAs, I, you know, I've been reviewing a lot of IPAs recently, and I probably sound like a little bit like a broken record with the shrimp tacos or coconut shrimp tacos with mango salsa, um, chicken dishes, um, 
you know, I wouldn't go probably too spicy with it. Sometimes these IPAs will make the, the spiciness, you'll have a little bit more bite to it. Um, you know, mahi fish tacos or just mahi fish in general, flounder, light fishes, I would, I would use this with. Um, chicken, I would kind of keep it on the lighter side, maybe just a, a simple, lightly grilled, low marinade type of chicken dishes. Um, maybe pork tenderloin, this would go good with, with a nice glaze on it. Um, but again, or even just, you know, simple salads, this would work on um, with some citrus trying to dressings because, or very little dressing because, you know, this kind of the, the citrus here may actually help with it, or I should say the fruit here may help with some of the dressings and some of the flavor profile, some of your dishes. Um, so anyway, guys, Pulp Art Hazy IPA from Brooklyn Brewery. Um, like I said, good solid IPA. I really actually enjoying this more um, than the, the double slash Imperial IPA from that same compilation pack. If you're interested in that video, take a look for it. If you haven't seen it already, I'm not sure what order I'll be publishing these videos. But again, very nice beer. Okay, guys, till next time, have a great day. Take